Many, many times, uh, the question we ask in many occasions is, uh, uh, particularly concerning f fasting, is uh, how can I be sure of uh, my expectation after fasting? You know, many years ago, I did a lot of fasting and I, I never had results. We do a lot of fasting and sometimes we, some other people don't even fast at all because of uh, I can, what I can call too much theology that tries to put everything as if nothing is happening. But I want to say, child of God, that fasting is of necessity. And uh, I, I fasted many times, many times and I had no results. Until one time, I decided to take my time and understand what exactly I was doing. And today, I want to shed more light on this subject of fasting so that those who go for fasting can be very sure of their expectation and they can be very sure to receive their results. You know, in the Bible, Jesus talked about fasting. He talked about prayer. He also talked about fasting. In the book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 21, Jesus was explaining about an issue that became very difficult for the disciples to handle. And when, they, when he saw their concern that they wanted to understand, he said to them that this kind cannot go out except by prayer and fasting. From that statement of Jesus, you realize that there is a way Jesus looks at fasting as being of another kind and another level, and the prayer of being another thing. There are people who think that once you have prayed, that's adequate. And others think like, once you have fasted, that's adequate. But I can say here today, that what prayer can do, fasting cannot do. And what fasting can do, prayer cannot do. Yes, prayer is adequate, but there are issues in this life that require a higher kind of prayer. And therefore, I can define fasting as a higher level prayer. You know, I look at prayer, the relationship between prayer and fasting is that of electricity. The, the voltage that we require to light up a bulb is different from the kind of voltage that you require to start up a machine or a factory. So when I look at prayer, it's the same power, but of a lower voltage. When fasting is the same, same power, it's the same, same kind of current, maybe ordinated current, the same, same kind of current, but of a higher voltage. And that's why Jesus said, this kind of issue does not just require prayer. It also must attract fasting. And therefore, I look at it like what prayer can do, fasting cannot do. You know, sometimes when you, if you connect a bulb that requires lower voltage to a power supply for a factory, definitely that bulb can blow. Therefore, as a believer, you must find out which kind of issue in your life requires fasting and which one requires prayer. So that that which requires prayer, you pray. And that which requires fasting, you fast. Let me now explain briefly what prayer is. You know, prayer requires faith. But fasting does not require faith. It requires the spirit. You know, the Bible says that anyone that wants to pray must have faith. Must have faith. So it is the kind and measure of faith that will determine how much prayer can usher to your life. Equally, when we go to the part of fasting, it is the amount of spirit in your life that determines the amount of things you, you are to handle. You know, child of God, before you pray, you know you require faith. Because anybody that prays without faith will not expect any results. And equally at the same time, 
Anybody that wants to begin fasting must fast up the Holy Spirit. Therefore, that means that before you pray, that is what you require. And before you fast, that is what you require. Before you pray, you require faith. And before you go in for fasting, you require the Holy Spirit. That tells you that for effective manifestation, both faith and the Holy Spirit are of necessity. Now let me explain this point further. Fasting is not the problem solver. But when we go to the place of fasting, which I advocate that should be a solitary place, a place of isolation, where there are no many issues that, that come up to disturb and to interrupt your, your prayer at that level. And therefore, I, I can explain fasting as a place where you spend time and out of that place, you receive or you attain what you will come to use in solving a problem. I want to say that in the place of fasting, most people receive a lot of revelation and ideas are given. And through those same ideas, our issues are solved. Now, why do I say that fasting requires the spirit? Fasting is not for kids. It's for those that have received the spirit. By the way, if you have not received the spirit, I dare say that if you go to the place of fasting, it will be a waste of time. Jesus, who is our best example, before he went in to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible records that he was full of the spirit. In the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus full of the spirit, full of the spirit. You know, God gives the spirit without measure, but you determine the measure you can contain. That's why the Bible says that for you to be filled of the spirit, you must be fully filled. There are people that receive the spirit, and in a way, the spirit is dormant in their life, or the spirit has not had an opportunity, or the spirit became hunkered and, and left their life. But I want to tell you this. If you are full of the spirit, the measure of the spirit in your life determines the measure of the issues you can solve after fasting. What do we get during fasting? You know, it, it, it is the same issue, even with faith. The measure of faith that you carry determines the measure of the answers you get out of your prayer. That's what the Bible teaches, that everyone should measure himself according to the measure of faith. Equally, in the place of fasting, the measure of the spirit that you are able to contain in your life determines the measure of the issues you are able to solve after fasting. Because at the place of fasting, the amount of spirit in your life is what is converted into power. The, the kind of power you carry after, after fasting, we call it the anointing. You know, when you look at the life of Jesus, when he went into the place of fasting, he was full of the spirit. But when he came out of fasting in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. After praying and fasting for 40 days, he came back full of the anointing. That's why the scripture records that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How did God anoint him? The spirit in Jesus was subjected to the place of fasting, and in that place of fasting, the same amount of spirit was converted into power, which we call the anointing. And that power is what breaks the yoke. Because the Bible says that it's only through the anointing that yokes are broken. And therefore, child of God, the amount of spirit that you enter with in the place of fasting determines the amount of anointing you come out with from the place of fasting, and that will determine the kind of issues that you are able to handle in our usual life. You know, I, I, I look at the relationship between the spirit and the anointing, like, like uh, that of maize that you are taking to a posho meal, expecting flour. If you take in, if you put in maize, which is like 20 kilos, you expect the machine to work on it and give you 20 kilos of flour. But you cannot take in 15 kilos of maize and you expect 20 kilos of flour. 
and the amount of food you are going to cook is determined by the amount of flour you are able to come out with. And therefore, child of God, anyone wanting to be successful after fasting, the most important thing you require is the spirit before you go for fasting. I have seen in several occasions, a number of occasions, people go to the place of fasting, probably they lock themselves in their house or on a mountain of prayer, and they expect that after fasting, they are coming out successive and victorious. But let me tell you, child of God, let me tell you, child of God, and this is for real. You can go to the place of fasting, fast in for seven days or 40 days or 21 days, and come back and have no results at all. That was my case in those days when I fasted without understanding. But before you go into the place of fasting, make sure you have received adequate measures of the spirit so that when you are in the place of fasting, those measures of the spirit will be converted into power. Now, when you come out of the place of fasting, you come with adequate power to handle certain issues. From the time I started praying and fasting with understanding, I can tell you I have seen tremendous change and numerous results in my life. I have, I have seen myself being elevated in the area of finances, being elevated in the area of the miraculous, being elevated in the area of the difference. I have seen the Lord is and do a lot of things because I now fast with understanding. If I discover or I sense that the levels of the spirit in my life are drastically reduced, then I don't have to waste my time to the place of fasting. I first have to do what it takes to have the spirit in my life. And then I go to the place of fasting. I know now the spirit will be converted into power. And when I leave the mountain of prayer, I come back just to handle issues at ease without any problem. I want to wish you well that as you begin praying with understanding, as you begin fasting with understanding, you will have results and you will have testimonies all over about what God has done through his power working in your life. God bless you until next time.